Okay guys, this video has been a long time in the making, and I think it's gonna blow you away. Today we have 12 of the greatest Android tips, tricks, and secrets, and I'd go as far to say that most of these you'll never have heard of. So we're gonna save the best till last, and let's get started. Very quickly before we get into it, this video was sponsored by pCloud, but we'll save that till the end. Did you know that Google Chrome on Android has a hidden reading mode built inside of it and that automatically converts articles into more readable formats and completely removes the adverts? All you've got to do is to go into the Flags section of Chrome, which is an experimental menu, find the Reading Mode option and click Always Enable. And from there, anytime you're on an article, you'll see this little notification and when you tap that notification, Reading Mode is enabled. Complete lifesaver. Next up, the ring light is a very inexpensive, very simple and very effective way to up your selfie game. It's got soft tabs so it doesn't damage your phone and works with a simple hinge mechanism. And it's got three different layers of brightness, the brightest of which can completely change the way a scene looks. If you're in an area where there is no light, very little light, or just an overpowering color of light, this continuous light compensates for that. And you get a sharper photo that is also much more color accurate. Only thing to bear in mind is sometimes it can block part of the screen which can get in the way of you taking the photo, but not a huge deal. Okay, like most people, I take my smartphone everywhere, but it would be kind of nice if I didn't need to take my wallet as well. So if you only wanted to carry some money with you, you can actually store it in the back of a case. And it's not gonna damage your smartphone, just fold it carefully. You could even fit two to three notes inside of there. And of course, this also works with cards. If you don't wanna use cash, you can normally fit two cards behind most smartphone cases, killing two birds with one stone. On to the next one. There is actually a hidden benefit to buying the premium versions of an app. Now, don't get me wrong, free apps are great. They have almost all the functionality and you just have to put up with a few ads. But these ads, as well as being annoying, also cause battery and data drain. It creates one extra background process where the app is trying to figure out which ads to serve next and download them in advance. This doesn't necessarily mean premium versions are always worth it, but it's another factor to consider. The next one is a very simple thing. You often get notifications for a lot of things you just don't care about. And if you hold down on those, you can block them from coming which again is another thing that'll save you a little bit of battery because your phone is no longer checking for them, but also it stops you getting distracted and pulled into applications that you actually had no intention of going on. You might be wondering, why on earth am I composing an email to myself? Well, something which I found is super useful is taking photos of all your important documents and emailing them to you. So your passport, your driving license, your national insurance number, the number of times I've needed these on the go, even if it's just a scanned copy of them, is countless. And if you want to make them look like they've been digitally scanned in, you can use applications like Photoscan by Google or Tiny Scanner, and these can basically make anything look like they were digitally created. All right, we all know how fantastic Google Translate is, but Google quietly slipped in a pretty revolutionary feature. You can see it's called Conversation. And what this can be used for is to talk to someone who doesn't at all speak your language. You speak in your language, Google will automatically detect who is speaking and translate it to the other language. It doesn't work for every language that Google Translate supports, but it does work offline, which is a huge bonus. The cameras on our phones are getting better and better every year, that's no secret. But there is something really cool you can do with the panorama feature, which has been around for ages. Essentially, you can clone yourself, or at least appear twice within a photo. What you've got to do is hand the phone to someone else and tell them to start taking the panorama with you in front of them. As they then move around to capture more of the scene, you've got to slip into your second position, where they will pass you again. So because they are passing you twice in this panorama, you're going to appear twice in one photo. Quite a cool effect, very difficult to pull off without some sort of flaw. All right, have you recently upgraded your smartphone and you've just got an old, perfectly decent, usable phone sitting around doing nothing? Well, there's something you can do with it, actually. Head on to the Play Store, type in IP Webcam and download this application. And it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It allows your phone to turn into a surveillance camera. And an incredibly useful one at that, you can access it on any of your devices. It can record 24 seven if you keep the phone plugged in. And of course, you've got 4K video recording on most modern phones. I can guarantee that a good amount of you guys watching this video don't use Google Assistant at all. But what you might not have realized is you can repurpose that button. By installing Rocket Launcher, next time you hold your home button, instead of bringing up Google Assistant, it'll bring up a selection of apps of your choice. I wouldn't say it's the cleanest interface, but functionally speaking, very handy. 
All right, quite possibly what you came to this video for, Wave Control. Once you've downloaded the app and turned it on, you can essentially control your smartphone using air gestures, which is something we've seen before on phones in the past and it didn't work so well, but this right here is the best implementation of it I've seen. It works over 95% of the time, providing you get your hand at the right height above the phone, which is something you get used to, and you can use a number of different air gestures to control a number of different things, everything from your media player of choice to your phone book. Now the next hack ties into this one and takes it a step further. So by the company Avantri, we've got this pretty nifty cell phone holder. And what you do is you screw it in so it locks onto a desk, a wardrobe, a shelf, anything like that, and you've got this flexible neck, which is very rigid and holds exactly where you left it. So of course, what you do then is you clip your smartphone into there and it opens up a world of flexibility, literally. You could use it to use your phone while you're in bed, you could use it to watch movies from a little bit further away, and this allows you to adjust the angle, adjust the height, pretty much everything. It's a little bit wobbly when you touch the screen, but this is where the gestures come in. Pretty neat solution. Alright guys, as I said, this video is sponsored by pCloud, which is a cloud service and maybe the most complete solution I've ever come across. And here I'm just going to highlight some of the cool stuff you can do with it. Number one, rewind. pCloud has the ability to not just keep your files online, but also every version of your files. So say for example, you accidentally delete a portion of a document and then press save. We've all been there. You can use this to revert back. Number two, auto upload. So as well as just keeping your Mac or PC backed up, the same can be had with your mobile. This can be configured so that anytime you take a photo with your Android or iOS device, it appears on the cloud, fast. And then there's pCloud Drive, which is a desktop app that lets you access your files in the cloud, but as if they were on your local computer and without taking up any physical space. So that's pCloud. I'm gonna drop a link in the description below. So go check it. With that being said, my name is Aaron. This is Mr. Who's the Boss. I'm signing out.